Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building serverless applications with .NET on AWS. In this video, we're going to take a look at just how easy it is to take an existing ASP.NET minimal API and run that on AWS Lambda by adding a single line of code to your existing application. And to do that, we're actually going to start from a brand new minimal API project. So if I come over to my terminal here, I'm going to create a new web API. I'm going to pass in the minimal flag so that it creates this as a minimal API. I'm going to disable HTTPS. And I'm also going to give this project a name of Lambda Minimal API. If I run that command now, the .cli is going to go off and template a brand new web API project for me. And if I just navigate into that folder, I can open up my project file and we can actually get have a look at what we need to do to enable this minimal API to run on AWS Lambda. So here I am in my IDE now, and as you can see, we've just got the out of the box standard .NET new web API project that gives us a set of random weather forecasts if somebody makes a call to the weather forecast endpoint. So how can we now run this on AWS Lambda? Well, like I said in the introduction, we can do that by adding a single line of code to this program CS file. So to do that though, I actually need to add a NuGet package to my project and the package I need to add is Amazon Lambda ASP Netcore Server, server.hosting. So that's the package I need to add and we can see we've got that package there. And if I now go off and add that to my project, this will give me um, an extension method to our iServices collection to be able to enable the ability to run this on um, AWS Lambda. So just to do that, I just need to add an additional line of code here and I want to add AWS Lambda hosting. And then all I need to pass in is my event source. That is what I'm going to put in front of AWS Lambda, whether that be an API gateway, HTTP API or a REST API, or maybe even an application load balancer. Now, the reason that needs to be specified is of course, the payload that comes into Lambda is different based on what is sourcing Lambda. And what this add AWS Lambda hosting is doing under the hood in part is to add that translation layer to take the event payload from Lambda and marshal that into a request that ASP.NET can understand and then the, the opposite in reverse to take the response back from ASP.NET and turn that back into something for API Gateway, for example. And that payload and then the, the schema there is different based on what we're sourcing Lambda with. That's why we need to specify that we're using a REST API in this case. The other thing that's really cool about this um, add AWS Lambda hosting is that the, the, the code is smart enough to understand if I'm running on my machine or in the context of Lambda. So if I go back to my terminal now, I can still do a .NET run and I will actually still get this same API running on localhost. I could start up my debugger in, in Visual Studio or in Rider and actually debug this like I would any API. The tooling is smart enough to know that. And when I deploy this to AWS Lambda, it won't use the built-in Kestrel web server. It actually starts up an in-memory um, server and it passes the requests to that in line as opposed to passing things over HTTP. So I'm gonna shut that down now, but this is, this is ready to run on Lambda. So let's now go ahead and deploy this to AWS Lambda. And to do that, I'm gonna use the Amazon Lambda tools. And these tools add a set of extensions to the .NET Global CLI to allow me to easily interact with Lambda from my terminal. So I can do a .NET Lambda and I can say .NET Lambda deploy function. And actually, if we look at the available commands here, we can do some quite interesting things like invoke a function that's already deployed in Lambda. We could um, just package a zip file up. If we're doing this in a CI CD context, we might just want to package instead of deploying. But in this instance, we're going to do a .NET Lambda deploy function. And now the terminal, this, the, the wizard's going to ask me for, to input a few details. Um, so we're going to run this with .NET 6. 
um, and then of course it's going to go off and do my .NET publish and actually publish my API. It's going to ask me what I want to call this function in Lambda. I'm going to call this Lambda minimal API and then it's going to actually go off and create the Lambda function. I can then pass in some IAM roles. So I'm going to create a new IAM role and I'm going to call that Lambda net six minimal API. So I know what this is and I want to attach an IAM policy. In this case, I'm just going to add the Lambda basic execution role, which is number six in the wizard. And then it will just take a few seconds for that I am role to propagate to all AWS regions. I'm just going to pause the video here while we wait for the I am role to propagate. That has now completed now, and now I just need to add a couple of configuration options for Lambda. So the first is what memory do I want my Lambda function to have? Let's just go for 512 megabytes. Um, my timeout, this can only be a max of 30 seconds if I'm going to put API gateway in front of it. And then it asks me, what is the handler? Now, if you're not familiar with how .NET and Lambda works, when you specify, when you deploy a Lambda function, you specify the handler for Lambda to invoke. Now, normally with .NET, this is made up of a combination of the assembly name, the type or the class that you want to invoke, including the namespace, and then the actual method that we want to invoke. But of course, we're within a minimal API here, so we just get an executable assembly. So if I now go to look at my Lambda Minimal API project, this is gonna generate a DLL called Lambda Minimal API, and that will be an executable DLL. So my handler is actually just Lambda, if I could spell, let's start again, Lambda Minimal API, that's the name of my handler because this is an executable assembly, so I'm just gonna get a DLL with that name. And I pop that in there, and my Lambda function is created. This is now deployed into AWS and ready for me to run. So let's go off to the console now and actually have a look at how we do that. So I'm here in the AWS console now, and we can see my Lambda minimal API function has been created in uh, in the console and we can go off and we can have a look and we can see all of the configuration that we set when we were deploying the functions. So we've got the memory, uh, we've got the timeout, we've got to look at the permissions, we've got our role. So the other thing I've done while the video was paused is I've just created a brand new API gateway REST API and I've added a single resource to that REST API and when I add the resource, I can configure that as a proxy resource. And what that proxy resource does is just tell API Gateway for any requests that come in on that um, path for any methods, just pass them on to my Lambda function. So you can see I've got a proxy resource on the root of my API, which means any requests that come into this API will get passed on to Lambda. And I've set up an integration request of, of, of type Lambda function to pass that on to my Lambda, Lambda minimal API. So all API Gateway is gonna do is just act as a proxy, receive that request in and just pass that straight on to my Lambda function. So if I go off to my stages now, I can have a look at my dev stage and I have actually got um, a URL that I can actually go and invoke now. So if I go and look at the root of that URL, you see I get back a kind of a strange error. If we go and have a look at here, I'm getting a 403 error back. That's because there's not actually a resource there. If I now make a request to, let's say, um, my weather, which we know is a route that doesn't exist, you see I now get back a 404. That 404 is being returned by ASP.NET because ASP.NET, of course, doesn't know about the my weather route. If I now switch that over to the weather forecast, however, you see I get back my weather forecast as I would expect and I can hit that as many times as you want and you can see that the latency is pretty good. And that's just about all there is to it. It is really that easy to take your minimal APIs and deploy them to AWS Lambda. Now let's just quickly talk about the performance of doing that because there is a performance impact of running a minimal API on Lambda because of course when your Lambda function performs a cold start that API has actually got to be created and bootstrapped and set up. So if we go and have a look at some of the performance characteristics now you can see we've got cold starts of about a second 
with minimal APIs on Lambda. Obviously, once the API is warm, then we get some good performance that we know and love with ASP.NET. So you are with using this in this way, there is a cold start of about a second. In an upcoming video, I'm gonna have a look at how you can use .NET 7 native AOT with ASP.NET on Lambda to help reduce that cold start time of your API. But as of right now, if you were to do that today, you would see about a second of cold start latency. Now that might not be a problem if you're building maybe a back end, um, a back end service or you know like an internal application that's only internal, a HR application for example, where latency might not be a key characteristic of your application but it is incredibly easy to get set up and get started and of course the other benefit being that i can still keep that same local debugging experience that i know and love as a dotnet developer and take that same code and then deploy it to lambda and get all of the scalable cost effective resilient benefits that come with serverless technologies that's all I've got for this video. I will see you next time.